How's everyone's Monday going? Pretty good? Pretty good. Ugh, Mondays, you know, slow starts, aren't they? Mm. Out of bed. Oh, it's going to be a long week. Oh, drag yourself to the gym. Drag yourself to work. Yeah. Probably better than mine <laughs> because I'm down $13,000 from some random off, I'm guessing, Cayman Islands somewhere. Just booked a first class ticket on my Amex. I've got no cash. I am done for the month. Can't, I cannot afford to pay anyone here. Kane's not getting paid. Ollie's not getting paid. Honestly, I've got a new fun game, actually. Let's play this game where, like, everyone gives me a dollar. <laughs> or something like that. Is that a game? Yeah, just a fun game like that. Uh, that'd, be, that'd be fun. So what are you guys doing for lunch? Do you guys want to... What do you feel like? Oh, well, I can't afford anything. <laughs> so no, I feel like just a big plate of air again. Yeah, yum. Yeah. Yeah, so we should play this fun game, rock, paper, scissors. If yeah. I lose, then, like, you got to pay me lunch. So you get my lunch or something like that. Yeah, that sounds yeah? really fun. Okay, let's go. Rock, paper, scissors, what are you got? And well, hang on. Is it rock, paper, scissors present or do you present on Nah, you owe me lunch. Too many questions. You get me lunch. Sorry, man. Nah, too many questions. So I'm having the best Monday. It just, <laughs> nothing better than waking up and seeing fraud, fraud, fraud. I'm a fraud. Oh my God. I'm going, I've gone to fraud watch. <laughs> I've put myself on fraud watch. Put my, I'm putting me on the whiteboard. What, me and the Amex. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. What a time to be alive. This is great. I'm having a good time. Hey guys, this is fun. Welcome to the Dan uh, Podcast. You can find more of Dan House Footy on the website, Spotify, YouTube, and social media. Clint Top. See ya. There was heaps of sick kids, and I was like, where are they? Kick them harder. Kick them all harder. Punch them in the face. Bloody horizontally charged, if you get what I mean. Oh no. Oh, tough crowd today. <laughs> Should we say this is the line? If you don't hear the next bit, it's over the line. Okay, so if you don't hear the next bit, I've got a line. Who's just walked past Pun Road? It dips in. Dips in. Okay, Ollie. This is, I've had a great, I had a good weekend. I'm mm-hmm. um, not going to lie, getting a call from Amex at, what is it now, 9 a.m. in the morning saying, hey, you're down $13,000. That's probably not the best way to start your Monday. No. We both had rough weekends. Uh, that's very true, but I'm going to just start things off by saying I've got Ooh, something. Oh, Ollie does footy. I've got <laughs> something go. here. Oh, no, no, don't start with this. To make you feel a lot better about yourself. Oh, you say a lot worse. No, <laughs> this is a present for you. Okay. Is it money? Last week, it's better. Last week, yeah. we ran into a little bit of a snafu here on the show when you were a little bit confused as to who Daniel Ricardo's sister is, right? So you said she's either the violinist at the Melbourne Victory Games yeah. or she's a caterer, <laughs> which I think we can all agree I mean, is just the most wild I heard ends of, of the spectrum. Yeah, I heard a vicious rumour and I was, don't think I was right on any of those. The good news is... He does actually have a sister. Oh, my God. She's a caterer. Michelle. Michelle. We couldn't track her down oh. for you. But oh. who we did track down. Danny Ricardo <laughs> Is the violinist <laughs> for Melbourne Victory, Evangeline Victoria, for you this morning. Is she here? <laughs> ah! <laughs> Danny Ricardo's sister. <laughs> oh, this is great. We're the only team that the garden knows. We'll keep our hands up. We got all the hands up in the lyrics. If our hands up. <laughs> and then they know that they've been playing against the famous old art blues. Yeah, great. Great. This is unreal. I am personally so, so sorry for calling you a caterer. <laughs> and amazing. Or Daniel bonus. Ricardo's sister. Or Daniel Ricardo's sister. Oh, my God. Thank you so much for coming in here. Apologies again. Are you mic'd up? We're mic'd hey, we'll up here? get now. Evie, if you want to take a seat. Oh, my, I did not even notice that. That is unbelievable. Very good, guys, here. Now, I don't, I don't know where, where do you – look, I'm just going to let you do this, Dan, because this is a really big moment for you. Yeah, it is. Um, so, clearly, last week, we – I thought you were Danny Ricardo's sister. So, the first question is, uh, are you Danny Ricardo's sister? No. No, okay. <laughs> Have you met him ever? No. <laughs> no, okay. Mm. Sorry. Do you know anyone in catering? Do we have yeah, any connection? actually. Oh, you well, do? Well, this is the thing. I thought that maybe the connection was the fact that like catering and violin and entertainment's kind of in the same 
industry of events. Yeah. Well Maybe thought. that's where you Good like connection. connected Look, it. I think what I heard was I was at the F1 and I heard this rumor or someone was saying, we're talking about A-League and then you came up and it was like, oh my God, we love the A-League because like the violinist. And then someone said just behind me maybe, not even the conversation, yeah, that's Danny Ricardo's sister. And so now I've just run with it massively and now right. everyone thinks that you're related to Danny Ricardo. But where's the catering come? That was just because your mind is – I think I kind of made that one up on the spot. Yeah. I'm not really sure. <laughs> Under I'm pressure. I'm not really sure. So thank you for – now I, I want to start with how long have you been playing the violin for? I've been playing for 21 years. Whoa, that's – okay. Since and how old are you? I'm – how old yeah. was is that a, I? Is it a personal question? No, are you? I, uh, 28. You're 28. Okay. So when you were seven you picked yeah. it up. That's yeah. great. And the A-League thing, they said, listen, we're not getting many numbers here, but we've got this crazy idea. We not get even. you involved. They, I got a call literally the week before the first performance I did with them from my manager, Leighton, from Unplugged Entertainment. He was like, hey, uh, fat chance you're available, but next Saturday, are you free that night? Um, it's just for like a quick feature performance. You're literally playing like for a minute and 15 seconds. I was like, yeah, sure. And it's like, I'm quite busy on, especially on Saturdays during peak season for weddings. Yeah. So the fact that I was available was very bizarre, but I truly believe that it was meant to be. Of course. Um, and yeah, like was told to learn this song and then rock up on the day of a soundtrack and then. Sounds just, similar to this, doesn't it really? Yeah, like, like this. And then I, I played and then like two days later they posted the video and it went viral Crazy and then viral. it was like it, it was like chaos from there, like good chaos. Good because everyone would have been like, okay, we know, we know who you are now. Yeah. You're this amazing. Because I saw it the first time I was like, okay, I wouldn't go to the A-League like with all due respect, but I would go purely just for that because it seems like the crowd's right into it. They oh, love it. So into it. Like I, so I have in-ears when I'm playing so I can hear what I'm playing because there's such a huge delay in the stadium. Mm. So I can't quite hear what or what is going on in the in the stadium, but the sound of the crowd like chanting with the song Crazy. cut through so so strongly through the in ears. And then the second time I performed, which was not the weekend, just gone the weekend before, when they had me performing in front of the Northern Terrace. That was crazy because yeah. they're the ones that have like they know all the chants, they know all the songs. Oh, and so then cool. yesterday was just insane. Oh, you said yesterday. You did yesterday. Yeah. So yesterday I performed as well um, for their semi-finals, and there was a massive hype like A League and Melbourne Victory, and like all of the the channels they were like pushing that I was going to be there, and so even more people were coming. I was getting messages saying I'm really coming to see the oh show just God. to see you perform, which is pretty cool. That's but like amazing. also watch the soccer; it's also really entertaining. <laughs> I am begging now. A lot of clubs listen to us, but a lot of clubs do listen to us. We have yeah. a lot of comments from the clubs. If there's an AFL club out there, I hope it's who's your team? Western Bulldogs. Okay, we can work on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, mean, to be fair, the first and only song that I know from any of the clubs is now Carlton. Thank so. you, Sir Carlton. I am begging the people at Carlton, Danny, um, Dana. Um, I'm trying to think who else. Luke Say is president. Please, mm. Fossey, might as well Fossey, ask him. Please, we need to make this happen mm-hmm. before a game. Yeah, like it would imagine ninety thousand the jet. Oh. I can't do much more for you, Carlton. There's, like, there's, there's a lot of people who've like tagged an AFL and a lot of things. Like literally. AFL, you should pick this up and like all of the sports. Even there's like apparently Seven Nation Army is some famous darts mm-hmm. player. Carlton do that. They do the... Dun, uh, 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 um. So it's they do just, that as well It's now. actually a no-brainer. Yeah. Amazing. And wow. I mean the same colours as Melbourne Victory. Yeah. yeah. Hey, <laughs> um, we'll, we'll make this happen. We, yeah. not on this show, we get fixated on like really yeah. – we go down a rabbit hole. Once we're down it, like we, we go Let's down go it. Down the so hole. we are begging Carlton to make this happen. <laughs> we're looking at it. That would be big. Evie, thank you so much for coming yeah. in. Thanks Can for having me. Can you see the smile on Dan's face? I, I, did. Yeah. I had the worst Monday ever and this yeah. has just turned things around. Um, just quickly before we go, footy, doggies. Yeah. Like hardcore doggies or just like, okay, I see what you do now and then. Look, I – I am, if I'm watching a game, I'll go for dogs. But yeah. my first ever game I went to was it as Essendon Sydney Swans game. Okay, yeah, right. I just love the atmosphere, and I I can get into the game. Like when I'm there, I can get into the game, yeah. and I, I can watch it, and I know what's going on. I know how it works. But I'm like I'm grateful I saw my team win a premiership in my lifetime. Yes, which is well, that, that was a good day. That's cool. But like I'm not hard hardcore. No, but they're like if you had to ask me, Western Bulldogs. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah, I'm honest. so fixated now on Carlton yeah. and you being there for a Carlton game. I'd, do, I I'd be back. down. Okay, we'll make it happen. <laughs> we'll make it happen. Sorry, dogs. Amazing. Thank you so Thank much. You, yeah, Thank you. Best Monday ever. They can keep the money. We're good, mate. That was great.
<laughs> what a what a wild Monday this has been. I haven't even looked at the running order. Don't worry that about it. Nervous. Fuck it. <laughs> just let it fly. That is, you've been nervous the whole time. Well, just I, I've never. I don't know if you can. I guess you can kind of count that as a prank, mm. but I've not done anything like that before. It was great. Like to so that, try and orchestrate that perfectly. You did really well, mate. Thank you. That's turned everything around for me. A couple of things. Didn't know the lyrics to the song. Yeah. Where do we go for from there? Like, I don't know. I'm assuming you'd know it if you were with the boys. I think so, yeah. I think it was one of those ones where a lot was happening just then. It's yeah. been a long morning for me. I've been scammed a lot of money. Evangeline comes in here. I just – I've been thrown off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, so, that's the idea as well. We didn't want you But to still great. I mean, we had intro uh, – nothing on this run sheet makes any more sense no. because the thing that I'm seeing here is servo condoms. <laughs> <laughs> that's the most natural segue. It's what other show do you have in the first 10 minutes, I assume? Mm-hmm. You get scammed. Yep. You get a violinist in here. Yep. And now we're talking about servo condoms. I can't think of any. There's none. There's just none. So on the servo condoms, just because I had to put petrol in the way here, mm-hmm. one, who's who's buying servo condoms, and two, why are we why are we making them available at the servo? At what you know because what I am, I'm a serial car, a, a treat for the car, yeah. petrol, <laughs> walk a in, treat for me, a treat for me, like a little cookie or a bar or sometimes like a, a roll, like chippies, yeah. sparkling water. I don't go fill the car up. Actually, I do need condoms. Well, that's a trait for yourself, isn't it? <laughs> so you, if you, uh, would that uh, ever cross your mind in condoms to be he, like, you know what, I'm here, fuck he, it. Here's the thing, Dan. I can't confirm nor deny if I've done that. But oh what God, I am saying have. is, no, what I am saying is, is that if you're <laughs> driving to see your partner, yeah, no, no, and you go, oh, be hang prepared. on, be prepared. But that's pretty pretty prepared. Is buying some in the first I d- place. I don't think it's play on to ever buy condoms at the servo. Do you, you do you worry about the quality of them? Is that what you're? I think it's about? just a weird thing to be like, oh yeah, number six and thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you always disguise it with some chewing gum yeah, as well yeah, or something. Yeah, this guy's fucked up. He's got like four sushi rolls and some condoms. I don't think it's just weird. I just but just on condoms now. We're going down a rabbit hole. Yeah. Back in the day, when you used to have a condom in your wallet. Mm. Just like you're a virgin, you're like, oh, you never know when this thing will get broken. And the oh, I remember then as well, they were definitely the, the pleather wallets. Oh, so you yeah. could see pretty clearly. It was, clearly. There. It yeah, was yeah. there. And then, yeah, just tuck it in behind the cards and be like, you never know when we need this bad boy. And you, just, you would never need it because you right. are a virgin. You'd have to really keep your eye on the expiry date. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, get a, right. you get a pack, a new pack of 12. Yeah. Yeah. Of 12. Chocolate flavor. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so that was this one thing on my. I'm thrown off here, but I love it. I'm, this has been a, a, a horrible, random weekend. This has been great. We're off to an absolute amazing start here. What a weekend of football, considering all things. We had games that were very close, and then we had just total blowouts. Yeah, total blowouts. And I think we've learned a lot from this round of football. I think that we've learned after nine rounds of football, there are some fans out there who, when they're asked who they go for they hold back tears mm. and they're fighting hard to hold those tears back. You'd probably be one of them now. Yeah. If someone says, who do you go for? You go, I think I'd think be one of them. <laughs> you've had, you've had a, a great weekend for all the wrong reasons. Mm. Well, I'm just so glad that Evangeline came in because this is also, can I say, exactly mm. why you let those DMs fly because oh. at some point someone will reply yeah. and you'll get this. But And how about the other ones that you sent? Because you sent me a couple of them. I'm assuming they were Melbourne victory players. Well, before I move on, I will say this. Oh, no. Evangeline didn't follow me back, so I am a little bit dark. <laughs> so her and Josh battle. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I was, I was pretty well behaved this weekend on, on the DMs. Because yeah. I, I, I looked at that St Kilda game and I thought, I, I commented on your post and I, and I meant it. There wasn't a player past or present that, you know, wasn't... Was safe. You know, particularly in the firing. You know, seriously. Mm. But I was too emotional. I'd regret a few things. Oh, no. You know, my, no, no, no. That's what I, I didn't. So mm. I'm saying my DMs are happy DMs. And I felt like that wasn't the time. So it was phone away. Tuck it away. Tuck, tuck into away. your Tazzy Pino, two bottles. Yeah, two bottles. Devil's Corner. Devil's Corner and a wilderness. Um, but what I would say is even though I didn't send many, I received a lot of people being like, hey, I've got, you've given me the idea now, essentially. Do you want to go for a beer? Really? <laughs> this is great. I, f- I saw your follow account. You got a few on the weekend. You're pretty mm. happy with it? Yeah. Hit over I, the 5K mark? Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so happy with it. 
it, it also came up with this is really embarrassing. So for anyone out there who's done this, shame on you. When it ticked over five thousand, it said, "Congratulations on reaching five thousand. Yeah, do you want to post it on your story with the badge?" And I went, "You'd have to be some sort of freak." To do that. Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah. Oh, don't worry. When I get to... Ten? When? No, if I got to a... Subst- like, a hundred thousand. What's... what? Okay, well, we've said that you now want more than maybe five selfies. You want, like, that eight mark. Eight mm-hmm. to ten is your sweet spot. It, follower-wise, oh, what do you reckon you would get to, to? That needs to really yeah, get Yeah, so up. what do you want? I'm well, realistically to be the, happy. What's the date today? It's the 13th. I'd say by the end of the month, I want ten. That is such a... She's going to 5K increase. Mm. Well, it just, just depends in how much. In seventeen you, days, you just need to post me more. <laughs> is really the thing. okay. Let's let's make that an ambitious goal yeah, for you to have you. that. Um, yeah, that's been what well I mate. You, you've had a, a, a good weekend. Weekend, you've done yep. that. We're now away and flying. Yep. A really sad weekend. Um, given the news on Friday with Cam McCarthy, yep. I know we're going to change pace here a little bit because I think it's important before we get into having a laugh and a good time, we do um, pay our respects and acknowledge, you know, Cam or the beautiful person he was and part of the uh, AFL world. And unfortunately the news out of Perth on Friday was that uh, at the age of 29, he passed away, um, which was just just horrible. Obviously treated as, as non-suspicious. So I think we can all assume what happened there, unfortunately, and just... Um, just one of those things where it's just so sad because you'd like to think with everyone's battle, you know, everyone's going through a battle of some sort, you mm-hmm. know, everyone, we're all fighting a silent battle and, and we do hope that you are winning that silent battle that you're not telling anyone about. For Cam to unfortunately be in a spot where he was just done and, and didn't want to be around anymore is just horrible to think about. It's it's horrible for, for everyone involved, obviously Cam and his family and, um, yeah, it's just a, just a shame and just – Given the battles that you know I've had and been open about it and so fortunate enough to come through the other end, you see the side where other people aren't as fortunate as I am and they think that's the only way out. So mm. our thoughts are with Cam, Frio, the Giants, Cam's family first and foremost and just to you guys out there as well, if you are struggling, um, just keep going, keep reaching out, keep talking to each other. We know that life is shitty and you get dealt some shit hands but just keep going and – if you are struggling today and you had a bad day, you, you're doing good. You got out of bed and you put one foot in front of the other. So if you don't think anyone's proud of you, we're proud of you. And obviously in Australia, if you are struggling and you don't know where to go to, please call Lifeline. They have an amazing support. You can call them up on 131114. Um, and the Kids Helpline as well is on 1800 55 1800. So please reach out, whether it be friends, family, or the support services around us. Okay. Uh, a lot happened. I'm going to start with this because I think it's now it's been bubbling away. Mm-hmm. We know that Kelly is is Kelly, and I don't want to talk about her anymore because that's just it's going to run its own course. But I want to move the attention to BT. Mm. It's time. I it's think it's time. time we meant we we bring up BT seriously. Beat like full respect. Commentating would be hard. You know what that is. Commentating would be so hard, but I just feel like he's more out of tune than ever mm-hmm. in terms of not really what's going on in the game, but his tone doesn't match what is happening in the game, yep. if you know what I mean. Uh, he's saying some things that are just detracting from the actual spectacle and experience of sitting on your couch and wanting to enjoy a game of football. And I noticed it more than ever this week. Was there something in particular? From memory? or uh, The Kemp thing was pretty bad. Yeah. Saying that Kemp staged for a free kick, I think that's just a horrible thing for a commentator to even say in our game. Like he would think that quickly to do that. Well, the, the, just to provide context as well, I'm sure most people out there know, but the, the job of the commentator, th- that's that's way more special comments mm. if you feel the need to dissect, you know, when you're looking at the replay. Commentator, say what you say, mm. essentially. Yeah. I think the tone, I think is the one thing, I, definitely in that Thursday game, was the tone wasn't matching what was happening. Mm-hmm. Like he was just, I don't know. I, I, I think everyone would know what I'm talking about with him at the moment without actually having to explain it. So I want to, I think what, and seriously now, what, Seven and Fox Footy have to do is 
go through the broadcasters and every commentator and just do a clean sweep because there's some good ones there. But let's do a, a clean sweep and bring in some fresh blood. Bring in some more Matty Hills. I have no doubt there are another 10 Matty Hills out there somewhere that we could bring in and get a bit of life back into the commentary team. There's what, Jack Heverin. Have you heard him commentate? I haven't, no. He's a beast. He yep. also does the NBL mm-hmm. and he is sensational. I know what you mean. Was there a sweet spot, do you feel, with BT? Because he was hugely popular for the longest time, really. You know what? I think BT is great for radio. Yeah, okay. I think there's people that are good for radio and good for TV. I think the stuff that he does on radio doesn't translate to the TV audience. A bit more relaxed yeah. on the radio. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, a bit more relaxed. You can throw away lines. I, th- I, I just feel like watching it, growing up with the same commentary team for so long, yeah. I do feel like we're in a position where – and good. they've had amazing careers. Like, again, I fully acknowledge that this would be so hard to commentate and you're not going to please everyone because mm-hmm. just like your music sense, you prefer listening to other things than the person next to you. I just feel like now – Next year, more than ever, we are in a great position to be like, we are going to fully replenish the stock and bring in some Matty Hills. Yeah. And bring in more Matty Hills. Where, where it's difficult, though. You're right. We grew up with, with them. the absolute dream team, though. Yeah. We've got very high expectations as yeah. fans now. Yeah. We do. I do. I do. I think we're, especially the younger audience, I feel like the demo is more in touch with how they want to listen to their footy. Yeah. I feel like we're just a bit holding on to something that we can definitely make better. Yeah. So that's my point with that. Um, another thing with the game in, in sense, well, I feel like holding the ball's gone out the window. Don't you reckon? <laughs> have we just forgotten that, oh, totally. that rule exists? I feel like the umpires have said, you know what? We know it's a rule, but we're just, we don't want to acknowledge that one anymore. We can do 720s now. We're going to give you literally ample seconds to get the ball out if you need to. We just don't feel like playing it, paying it anymore. Yeah. We're done with it. We're done with that. I'd love to see the percentage of how many people have yelled ball in a game and how many have been called. Yeah. Because that, I know it would be far out of because yeah. I just don't it see just a lot of happen. balls being called anymore. Nah. Like there's a lot of opportunity to get rid of the ball. Yeah. So I'd, lo- I'd love to see what the AFL – again, if we had this umpire or AFL umpiring um, – interview a press conference, we'd know what they're thinking. Exactly. Why, why are you giving players so much time? Why aren't you paying the ones that should be paid? People really responded to that idea uh, of having them in the commentary box. Need them. And you just go, can we just confirm, Razor, for example, what, yeah. what did old mate see there? You go, well, you know, yeah. Bigfoot saw this and blah, blah, blah. Give an expert one. You yeah, go, okay. I'd like well, that. Then, you, then, then there's no more argument. What they should do as well is, because there's so many decisions, you should, um, like, the, and this is a good idea for the broadcasters, again, have a free – do like a text line and then have a quiz in the bottom of the screen. Like, do you think that was a goal or do you think that was holding the ball? And then mm. see what like people think. A bit like during in maths where they go. Yeah, like the maths poll. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they should do that because that's when you get a good gauge. But yeah. again, I think the AFL would fucking hate that. Because yeah, because well, we, we all know what would expose everything. Voting. Yeah, totally. everything. Yeah. Uh, but around, around the league, before we get into the games and review everything that happened, the wheelpower, a homophobic slur again. Mm-hmm. Five games given that Jeremy Finlayson got three, I think. Uh, yes, it was three. Three. So they've obviously three, upped the ante yeah. and they're trying to stamp this out. Now, first thing my mind goes to is there shouldn't be homophobic slurs because we're actually encouraging gay footballers out there to come out and say, put my hand up, I am gay and this is this is me. Mm-hmm. So the more this happens, the the more deterred players are to do that. Yeah. And there's no doubt, if we're, we're naive to think there are no gay AFL players. Mm. There are gay AFL players in our game. Mm-hmm. And of course they wouldn't come out given what's happening at the moment. Mm. Like, they, why would they? And the media on top of that, it'd just be a shit show. That was my first thought. My second one is, if you're going to say something, don't use a homophobic slur. And my third one is, if you are bubbling under the surface, you've just got to get some venom out. You see a player and you're like, you know what? Fuck him. Just, it's not that hard to call him a <laughs> And you're going to beep that out. But I said, see you next Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Just, if you want to think of a word, just be like, you yeah. Is it that hard, boys? I didn't think it was that hard. No. Just go into the game saying, if someone rubs me the wrong way, I'm calling them. I'm calling them that name. Yeah. Like, come on. Like, I'm fucking over it. I am over it now. Like, it, there's the whole industry, you get to paint it. It's just shit for everyone. Yeah. It's shit for the players involved. They'll get paid with the same brush. Can we fucking stop doing it? Please, everyone. Uh, big news with Jeremy Cameron in concussion protocol. Now, I don't know if you saw this, but last five minutes of the game, he goes up. He says, I'm going to win this game for my team, boys. Get on my back. There's tequila and oysters waiting for me. Comes down, hits the deck hard. Trainer goes out to him or doctor goes out to him twice. Doc says, you okay? Yeah. So I'm fine. Go away, doc. Comes back again. You okay? I'm fine, doc. Go away. After the game, he has a shot, I think, shortly after. Yeah. He misses it. Um, 
And then after the game, a day after, they go, Jeremy Cameron is now in concussion protocols. So AFL, figure it out. But was, who's in the wrong there? Clearly I Jeremy think, is, right? I think no. I, th- I think Jeremy is – the player is always going to want to play. Yeah. So you have to protect them for themselves. So it's either on the club to say, listen, you were on the ground for five seconds. Yeah. Like you didn't really move for five seconds. You got up. You're a bit dazed. I asked you twice. You didn't give me the answer that I liked. Drag him off. Just yeah. drag him. That maybe is the first step. If that doesn't happen and the player is always going to be like, mate, fuck off, then it's the AFL to be like, no, no, that we don't like that at all. We know that the HIA test is very much a visual aspect. Aesthetically, for the AFL, it has to look like they're doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. That's You can't come out and cross that off, the no. AFL, and be like, that's, no, that was fine. We're happy with that. Bullshit. Yeah, Don't do brilliant. that. Protect the players for themselves. Look out for them because that, that was just clearly a case where he was not right to play on and now he misses 10 days. I just can't put myself in their shoes because I would always say that I would go off. But I've just I've, – I've not – I don't have that in me, do you know? So I can't relate to him. No. But I still feel like a player's responsibility is to own up a little bit. They just won't. Like, I get what you're saying, but they just won't. Like, a player will never say, you know what, I've got to come up. We're down by six points. We've Mm. been down by 48. I think I should say on here. Like, they're not, that's not. Yeah. I get what you're saying, though. Like, they should have that. I'm also going to squash my comment because I've just thought as well, if you are concussed, you'd be saying anything. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's relevant what you're saying. Especially if you're a player like Jeremy Cameron, we're like, mate, I kind of need to stay on to win this game. Like, yeah. just leave me alone. I'll deal with it in five minutes. Yeah. So there's that aspect as well. I just didn't like that the AFL have come out and said, you know what? We're happy with it. We liked it. Oh, he went out there twice. He's good. And now he's in Kasha Protocol. So that's what I thought of it. I also have this weird thing about, and I watched it yesterday. I saw this yesterday. A new thing. And I want everyone to chime in on this. Okay. Players who have tats that look like they shouldn't have tats. <laughs> so my two that I picked up on this weekend were John Noble has a sleeve on his right arm. The big one that I'm really – I'm not finding an issue with because it doesn't keep me up at night at all, but <laughs> Lockie Neal. Oh, yeah, no, that's good. Yeah. Is anyone else – I think there's be a bunch there that everyone's going to chime in on that. Players who have tattoos that you're like, nah, that guy should be like a clean – it's like – me coming in with a slave and me like, oh, yeah, what do you reckon? Yeah, that, well, you do live in Port Melbourne. True. <laughs> that'll, that'll look good. True. I don't. I can't agree with you on John Noble. You reckon he looks all right with them? I reckon, well, I'm not saying I, I'm particularly into them, but he looks like the sort of operator that would have them. But you know what I mean? And when someone has tats, report. you're like, oh, I don't think that looks like you should have tattoos. This isn't a case of we don't like ink. I'm ink dumped to the eyeballs. Yeah, oh. I've got ink on me. So I've got tattoos. I can't probably talk. My tattoos are horrible. I'm sure people say, hey, you shouldn't have tattoos. Yeah, it's not – yeah, it's uh, – I'm – yeah. You don't look like you should have tattoos yep. or is you, what or we're saying here. Would. Yeah, or that you would. So that's – I think if you do see someone and you know someone, please let us know because I, I think there's a lot of players in the league who like uh, – you probably just – you don't look like you should have them. Yeah, tap watch. I like yeah, that. Yeah, big tap watch. Um, 20th team. can't believe we're saying this already. 20th team, a $735 million stadium plan to put it in Darwin. They're going to bid. They're saying, hey, bring a team up here in the NT. It's the next step. It'll be a truly nationwide competition. Mm-hmm. They're going to put a case to the AFL for a $735 million build, allowing the team to enter a few years after the Tassie Devils. We know they're coming in in 2028. And the plan also calls for $80 million in upgrades to, how do you say that word, Ollie? Traeger? I'm not on the- uh, Traeger Park in Alice Springs over the next three oh, years. Oh, Traeger Park, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Crazy. So, I mean, I think we've spoken about this briefly, if we thought an NT team would work. I personally do not think it will work. Just logistically? Logistically, I don't think okay. it will work. I don't think that- um, you'd be able to lure enough AFL players up there for the lifestyle for 10 months of the year. I but think. Would you have said that about Tassie? Yeah, Tassie. Yeah, I would have. Yeah. And I just don't believe that, you know? Mm, yeah. I, I, I don't think that it would be um, a place where players would want to go. I think what would happen is you'd be like the Gold Coast where you'd get poached because you get all your compensations, mm-hmm. you'll get your, t- your top picks, you'll get your, you know, one, two, four, seven, ten in the draft and then give them two years and they'll get poached and then you're just scrapping to keep players there. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You, you probably not take into consideration local talent though and people that come from that area that would – Yeah. That would be amazing for yeah, them. Yeah, that'd be a bit of local talent, yeah. I just yeah, I just I, I personally just can't see that, that a yeah. team being in the NT. I so see your point logistically. Yeah. I think that if they feel like they can financially do it, I think it would be amazing. Yeah. That's the thing. Oh, the, don't go, I, I would love a nationwide yeah. club. I'd love for it to thrive, but I just I, me personally I cannot see like that that working. Would you ever like instead of just bringing in a new team, 
you're just creating one again. Um, I, I genuinely believe there's room and people might not like this because we know that I'm a soccer fan, but I love the idea of promotion relegation. I think it would be incredible to not necessarily be rewarded for finishing bottom, but punished. Mm -hmm. And in, so like you've got the VFL and Port Melbourne with Just it. come up. Port get a go. Yeah. See you later, North. You're in the VFL. It'd be very cool. How good would that be? It would be very cool. But then you'd have two North Melbournes in the VFL. The oh. senior boys and the twos boys. We'll make it work. No. I've always said that I think the 20th team will be either a Perth or Adelaide side. I think yeah. they're now big enough footy states to be like, we can have a third team. More people in Perth or Adelaide? I'd probably be inclined to say the 20th. It'd be more inclined to be Perth. Yeah, okay. Just given that stadium and how much it can hold and yeah, the size true. of the state. Yep. I think they'd be, that'd probably be the next one in line. What would they do? What are the big teams there? South Fremantle, but they wouldn't do that. Mm, no. Nah. I'd be a completely different team. Yeah. Just a standalone AFL team yeah. to make it work. So. Margaret River. Yeah, Margaret River. Hey, this is great. Um, Mateus Filippus, his manager. Did you hear about this? Hit me. Oh, my God. So he has two managers. He has one that handles his contract and he has one that handles his sponsorship and endorsements. Okay. His endorsement manager, after their loss to the Hawks on the weekend, got on Twitter. Always a good idea. And said, at David King, tell me who in the forward line has improved. Owens, King, Philippu have gotten considerably worse under line. When they came in young and just played, they looked exciting. He is destroying them. He also liked another tweet that was ripping into Ross. He's now come out and said, look, hey, I was a bit like Ollie. Emotional after the game, fired out a few messages, didn't really mean it. But just a horrible situation to put on a club and more shit on a club that is struggling, that just lost to the Hawks, that have found no mojo. I am now prepared to say they have been very disappointing this year. Yep, I'll agree with very that Very disappointing this year. And now you've got this shit on the sides happening, stuff just bubbling under the surface. Not a great look for a guy who's not even in the team as well at the moment. Mm. And as, as Philip Poo, you'd be like, mate, don't ever do that again. No. Don't embarrass me like that. Because now I'm probably not going to pick this week. Yeah, and probably rightly so. Crazy. Like in a way, like if you were Ross, you'd be going, right, okay, I'll yeah. show you. Horrible. Seriously. Horrible. I, I Keep your opinions like that to the DMs. Mm, true. Don't oh, yeah. put it out into the public. Just go straight to Ross yourself. And Ross could either not yeah. see it, but you feel like you've got something off your chest. That's, yeah. Or he will see it and he'll reply and tell you to. That's, it's also another thing in the AFL world that, maybe people don't know about, but the managers and their relationship with list managers plays a heavy part on what happens behind mm. the scenes. So if your player who is a fringe player and is out of contract, the manager says to the club, hey, I think we're going to go elsewhere. You actually see a more inclination to put him in the team wow. to try and keep him and keep him on the, like the string and like, hey, you know, you're in our plans. You know, you're in the top 25. Yeah. You're playing, you're not playing. You're like, stick around for a couple of years. I think we're going to work it. Like there's a real, there's a, a lot of that stuff behind the scenes that pull strings behind clubs. Yeah, well, there you go. I'm doing this purely just for me. Okay. AFL Conspiracy Theories Part 2. <laughs> purely just for me. Um, the first one, I don't have any names here. I just found these. Um, People have sent these in? No, nah, I don't know. I went looking online. First one is about Matt Rao. I believe Matt Rao was drafted at age 20. Maybe his parents enrolled him into a school late. I watched him play a couple of games when he was 15, allegedly, and he was already built like a man. This happens a lot with baseball players from South America. Watch him retire at 32. He'll actually be 34. <laughs> that feels harsh. That's just, well, is he just saying he looks old? <laughs> that's, I think that's not a, Yeah, exactly. You're just saying he looks older than what he is. Yeah. I mean, a, he is built like a brick shit house. That's true. There is that as well. That's true, but he eats grass and, you know, that's... Yeah. Um, next one. The AFL wants 15-minute quarters, but they are scared of the backlash. So they are deliberately, deliberately making quarters last longer and longer with more free kicks, taking forever between goals, reviews, etc. So once it reaches a critical mass where quarters are lasting 40 minutes, they can say, sorry, but there is no longer any choice. The game can't continue like this. We're changing it to 15-minute quarters. Something in that, do you think? The quarters are long. They are long. If you think about when you're at a game, like say you go to a 7.30 game yep. and you go through a half a footy, it's a quarter to nine. By the time that year, like, and then you're at the, you're at the ground by what, ten? Yeah, and then but yeah, well yeah, yeah, well, ten thirty. Uh, yeah, you're at the game. Yeah, you're probably home by midnight. Realistically, settled. And that one's got something in it. Yeah. Um, there's two bevos, good bevo and bad bevo. <laughs> that's just like a fan who's just clearly upset about the bulldogs at the moment. So I don't know if that's really a conspiracy theory at all, but we'll take it. Um, the next one that umpires fairly regularly. 
try and compensate for a bad call against one team by making a favourable borderline call for the other team shortly after. You reckon? I reckon. I think there's something in that. So they go, oh, I shouldn't, Don't you have, reckon? shouldn't have done that. Even on a few games this weekend, it felt like maybe the D's game and maybe because I was sitting there chewing my nails, but I feel like Carlton got all the calls in the second and third quarter and in the last quarter, D's were getting like petty things. Yeah, okay. I think there's, Just, I reckon, and also in the mindset of an umpire, I reckon like if you go, I know that was a bad call, I have to now look and scan for something that's a bit borderline that I have to call back and give back to them. I hope not, but I probably, I could probably get behind this Yeah. One. Yeah, I think there's something in that. Um, and the last one, and this one I genuinely think is true. Yep. AFL actively monitor Brownlow votes throughout the year, and if someone is suspended and near the top, they actively encourage umps to not give votes to them. If someone is potentially a runaway favourite and the suspension is borderline, they rig it so the player gets charged with a lesser offence. They don't want a repeat of Chris Graham, Corey McKernan, Nat Fife, Tom Mitchell, Paddy Cripps. Yep. I reckon, yep. I reckon there is, yeah. Has to be. Has to be. So watch this. The next time like an Isaac Heaney slightly slips up, it'll be very interesting to see what he gets. I think it's – I think that's actually right. Yeah. 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 It would happen with the, the Paddy Cripps is the one that sticks in my mind. Yeah. Like honestly, he got a brown list. We can say now. Probably deserved the week. Yeah, probably. You know, that was yeah. bad. Yeah. I, I think that, that that actually be the worst – um, media marketing attention on the night that's the biggest night of the AFL for someone to win it and then be like oh sorry actually what you did in round four you can't do that yeah. so we're just going to make this a clean process well done to you yeah. I nah, think that's huge I'm on board yeah um, quickly here before we get into the, the round review Gatorade's lids off team of the year now this week we decided to bring a ruckman to the team because we were so mid heavy and our nominations were Grundy, who had 16 and 33 hitouts. Gorn had 17, a goal and 45 hitouts. Meek, my favourite, 12 really? touches, a goal and 45 hitouts. And O'Brien in the graveyard, 15 touches, 56 hitouts. You guys, this is your team. You voted on this, and you voted in Max Gorn to join the team. So what up, Maxi? What up, Max? Hey, what up, Maxi? Can I ask? Um, I know and that's you, good. I yeah. know you can see who people have voted. I can, for. yeah. No, everyone can if you vote. Yeah, how? Once you vote, it'll come up where the numbers are. No, but can they see who has voted? Like, cause someone, Other people. Yeah, someone messaged me and said, like, come on, mate, you're better than that. Why did you tip? Um, why did you go for Gaunt? You should oh, be I think they can, but there's like, man, we like, get thousands of votes on this poll. So someone's trolled through to see yours maybe. Oh, busted. Yeah, right. Well, who did you I, vote for? For Gaunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gaunt. And, and listen, guys, this is like, people are like, oh, this is this is your team. We're not <laughs> so, voting for this. No, uh, uh, no, he shouldn't have been in there. You only have this. Like, this, your, your guys are picking this team. Okay? Oh, sorry. I don't think uh, Gaunt should have been in there. He was actually not that good on the weekend. Pinned it, touched him up. He was very good on the weekend, guys. So, again, this Gatorade team is your team. You control it. And they're going to get the Gatorade jackets that yep. we're organising on. So it's a team you want to be in. I know there's the All-Australian team. Don't know about it. Mm, I'm off it. <laughs> too many too many chefs in that kitchen. Yeah. You know, cooking. No, no. This is your team. So what well to Gorney. Let's get into the footy. Thursday night. Weird for Carlton to be. Oh, no, not really. Actually, they're prime time. Carlton <laughs> VDs. Just cooked them. Just cooked them, ladies and gentlemen. Favourite dish. Carlton flag. Who's, I don't think anyone saw this coming given what the D's had done the week before and also where the Blues are coming from off the back of their loss. So I think for the Blues, going into this game, you're probably a bit nervous and you would have taken a two-goal loss. Mm -hmm. But what happened in the first quarter was just to behold. Absolute scenes. The Blues go five goals up. The D's don't kick a goal in the first quarter. They don't kick a goal for 40 minutes. And you think, okay – this is weird for the Blues to be in. Let's let's now put our foot on their throat. Let's do it. The Blues, you know, we said the defense is going to be hard for the Blues. The Blues offense, Harry and Charlie just started destroying mm. everything that was in sight. Um, and you thought, hey, okay, now they're five goals up. This thing's in the bag. Well, this will be okay. This will be fine. But no, nah, three-quarter time, it gets to a narrow lead, 22 points. And you're going, surely not. Surely, like, we can just hold on to this quite comfortably. Worst case scenario, 12 points, two goals, and we'll take it. One point. <laughs> One point win. And it's just getting to a point where it's like, Carlton, if you have the option between winning by 30 points or giving the other team five of the next six goals, you're going to give them one point. You're yeah. going to win by a point, aren't you? <sighs> Crazy. I think you've learnt your lesson, though, like by now. I've surely. learnt my lesson that there is not a single no. figure on a lead no. that I can say that's safe. Yeah. 
No, I don't feel, certainly from a St Kilda perspective, I don't feel comfortable until, I don't know, maybe two to three weeks after yeah. the results but actually in the system. I go, yeah. okay, so that did actually happen. Yeah. So I'm with you. So I, I just don't feel like that's, I feel nervous about what happened here. And I feel good because I don't have to run any kilometres where I thought this was a game that I'd have to run kilometres. But I just, come on, like, can we just learn to put a team to the sword? Like, yeah. why do we have to make it so hard? Don't have to make it that hard on yourselves. And the rain played a factor. And when the rain came, I thought, okay, the Blues are safe here because that's going to be hard to track down. We need to investigate the Ds in the rain. They are, they hate the rain. They're like when you try and tell your dog to go to the toilet outside to do a wee. And the dog's like, no, thank you. No, thank you. I like Charlie in a different role. He played higher up forward. He looked a bit like he had a bit more energy. Weeders was very good down back. He obviously played better with... McGovern back in the team, yep. completely better. We said that we going said into that. it. We did say that. Um, and again, I just want to reiterate, as a Blues fan, you just, for the rest of the year, nothing is a sure thing. <laughs> just no lead is safe. So it's going to be a tight year for the rest of the year. Shout out, you know, full credit to the Ds. Like to come back from that, Gorn got going, he was frustrated all game and then Viney did some like bullshit smack on the goal line back in for a goal. Track is just a bulldozer. He's got that dog in him. So, what well the, the, the D's will be around the mark. I think what will happen now is the D's have to make a decision between do we put Track forward or do we keep him as a midfielder? What do you do? I thought you can't. You're Robin Peter to pay Paul here. You can't keep him in the, as a forward. No. He's too good in the mid. You need to go find a forward. Yeah. But when you're kicking five goals temporarily, it feels okay to me. Yeah, but in big games, like, is that going to work? Yeah. Like, in a final, if you didn't say, okay, we're going to lose something here in our midfield because we need track to go and kick five. We, well, need, we need track to kick five to be in a game. Yeah. Like, that That means you've got issues up forward. Yeah. I, it'll never happen, but I'd love to see Stephen May forward. <laughs> yeah, why not? I think Stephen May forward and puts Harry Petty back. Okay. At least you've got some guy who you know is good in the air. That's true. He's going to make a contest. He's scary as shit. <laughs> so... You make someone twitch at least. Yeah. I think that's a, I think that'd be All a right. move they could look at. Watch this space. Yeah, watch it. Um, Cats v Power in a game where you knew they were having to kill an oysters after the game. You'd thought they'd come out and give a little bit more juice. Yeah. I thought they'd be a bit up and about. Like, this is Hawkins 355 game. Yeah. Let's come out and give something. And for the first half, the crowd was silent. Not a single sound. And at home, I was watching it going, what the fuck is happening here? <laughs> it was weird, wasn't it? How weird was it to see Geelong getting thumped at home? It was really weird. And not just beaten, thumped. Yeah. Absolutely thumped. I got the whiteboard out and I said, nah, I'm not having this. Frauds. Mm. You can join me and the Amex on the fraud list. Just, I'd, it looked horrible. They had no energy. Port looked great. Yeah. Stanley was getting beaten by Port's third Ruckman. And then they got subbed out tactically. I think we're at a point now where, Stanley, we've had a great career. I think they just need, for their structure, yeah. a, a ruckman in there like Conway to be like, I'm going to give totally. you a contest now. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? Geelong woke up on that Saturday morning. They looked at the result. They looked at how they played. Certainly early on, they thought, we need something. We need something else and we need to do it quick. Mm. And so you know what they did? They posted on LinkedIn, they need someone else working at Chin Chin. <laughs> They posted Saturday morning. <laughs> staff for Chin Chin staff and, Chin and, Chin. and GMHBO. So they they thought, not enough. <laughs> so the st- even the staff at Chin Chin are done with it. We're like, we need, to, we we need, need more hands on deck. Yeah, true. They're done. So, I've, And then the, you sit there and you go, there's no way they could bring this back. Like, no way. And the second half, they came home like a, a wet sail. Yeah. And holy shit, you think the Cats are going to do this. They're going to do this from nowhere. Come from the absolute clouds at home to steal one from poor. And they almost did it. Almost did it, but for that first half, you can't get past them getting walked around the ground oh. on a leash by Port. Just got rolled and rolled, and the it, the damage came from Port's mids. Yep. So Ollie Wines threw it back to his Brownlow year, had 33-1. Butters had 34-1. Horn Francis had 26-1. That If you let any midfield do that to you, good luck to you. Yeah. Good luck to you. Willie Rioli was next level. Everything he touched looked like it was going to be a goal. Stengel, we know he's in contract year. He added another 100K to that contract. Mm-hmm. He said, Eddie Betts' wife, hey, yeah. you know that figure you had? Cross out the eight and put a nine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want 900K now. And now the Cats are in a position where I don't think anyone's writing them off, but it's very much like, okay, 
We've spoken about we think they're going to run out of gas at some point. That first half to me screamed of we're a bit old here and we're a bit tired. It probably takes a half for the Achilles to warm up, the calf to get a bit yep. warm, the back was a bit sore. Yep. You can't do that. You can't give good teams that much of a lead. No, but I would say this. We've probably now seen them at their worst, would you say? Look, that, that, that they can't was, get, I don't think Geelong will be worse than that again. No, and they only lost by six points in the end. True. So if that's their worst, it shows they'll, they should be okay. Is that a rat? That <laughs> could have been. Definitely sounds like a rat, or someone who stole my Amex, <laughs> <laughs> and they're onto me. Is he up there? Okay. 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 Um, could you ima- sorry imagine a rat? If a rat falling. fell down on me right now, <laughs> this, I'd pack up the show and I'd never come back. Nah, fair enough. It'd be too. over. Um, I did see the biggest rat. I played golf on the Friday, yeah. and I know shit. I I've obviously lost my ball, classic me. Yeah. Lost my ball in the – you don't play golf. But I lost my ball and I had to go find it in the shrubs. Mm-hmm. My ball was next to a dead rat with its teeth hanging out like oh. that, that big. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, like a water rat? huge. Was this when you were down there for a meeting? I had a meeting on Friday morning. <laughs> Tax right off the until ATO. Nice. Um, back to the cats. I think that's the worst that we'll see them. But yeah. I am concerned about their energy levels Yeah. and the vibe of them. Yeah. So I don't know. I think that's that, – no, that's very fair. But I think that if we've seen them at their worst, mm. they'll be totally fine. Yeah, they will be. They'll be fine. The next game, the two Friday night games, we had the Frio and Sydney game. And now I'm going to say it right now. I think given everything that happened on the Friday with Cam McCarthy and where the players for Frio would have been in their mindset and preparation, I think as a Frio fan, you say – under circumstances, we don't even look at this game. We don't pay any attention in terms of the result and what it means to the club. Everything in Perth is fine. We just had a shit, shit day. Yeah. That's all you put it down to. Sydney were always going to be strong, but I think it just looked like Freya were, for all the right reasons, distracted, yep. flat, no energy, didn't really want to be there. They realised that probably, given the circumstances of the day, it was way bigger than football. Yeah. Way being the football. There wasn't a single per- – there wouldn't be a single person that could disagree with that. No. Nah. And yeah. I don't think – I think, you know, um, Longmire goes, you know, we're not even looking at yeah. this tape. We'll, we'll talk about some of the stuff, but I think we just go, let's get ourselves up and about this week. Yeah, absolutely. And let's get us, let's get Freo back to the Freo way. There'll be a very different Freo. It will be a completely week. different. Completely different. Against St Kilda. So I mean, it, you can't – you know, Sydney went out there and did what they had to do. Sydney had – I think if you're going to pencil any team in, I, it's Sydney are there in the grand final. Yeah. And then you throw a blanket on two to ten. Yep, I'd agree with that. I think you can say Sydney safely, they'll be there. At okay. eight or one on the year, Heaney is the best football player in the world right now. How good would it be to say I'm the best player in the world? In the world. <laughs> he, is, he is the best player in the world. You think he would have got the t- three votes maybe, the yeah. two he sneaks in for. Haywood again kicked four. The news story came out last week that Carlton are big on him. Yeah. They were wanting you. Can't want everyone. And we well, know Wedering the boys are taking less money. Um, and someone who's probably not getting as much love as what they did at the start of the year, Grundy's kind of just fallen and taken a back seat. But his work in the middle here, 33 hitouts against um, Jackson, who we look at Jackson as like that dog, yeah. that next dog of Ruckman who's the guy. Grundy's having an unreal year. And I said, I, I put my hand up and say I got it wrong on Grundy. I didn't think he'd do what he's doing right now for this team. But it's all you ever wanted. You, you oh, wanted, it's real. Yeah, yeah, I wanted him to get back to I it. I wanted him to you know, go back with the flight and take those important marks. It's, and That's all know. we want in this show. We want the best for everyone. Yeah. We do. Um, but, yeah, I, I, he's proved me wrong. I didn't think yeah. he'd be what he's, I didn't think he'd be good as what he is now. Yeah. yeah. Um, last thing that I've got to say on this game, a lot of, you know, we were like, oh, really, two games on a Friday night, we're going to have to be flicking. I've changed my tune because uh, how good was it? Mm. When the first game ended, yeah, and you, you know, you still had a little bit more Devil's Corner, true, and, and you're like, I don't know. yeah, yeah. I'll well, tell you what's I, still on. I had the um, laptop and TV running. Oh, really? Simultaneously. Sort of simultaneously. Yeah, yeah, close true. Yeah, close, simultaneously. Simultaneously. Um, a very confusing for the years. Mm. Yeah, very confusing. Oh, you for the years. didn't mute one. No, nah, I kept it running at the same time. Mm, that's a bold call. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kept it running. You still don't want to miss anything. Um, but Sydney, the real deal. They're yeah. they're very very good. Can't wait for you to talk about this. Do Cannot it. wait for you. Saints v Hawks. In a season that promised so much, in a season where you came off the back of a final appearance and the fans and the hope of the football club was at sky high and you think maybe this year the Saints will be better, maybe we'll push for a top four this year, you come out from finals contenders and being in the final series to wooden spoon contenders. Yeah. And you, I'm going to say it again, you have been very 
very disappointing this year, St Kilda. You, you may as well go out to BCF, get yourself a tent, get yourself some fishing rods, get yourself some fire starters and set up camp in the bottom eight because <laughs> you're going to be there for a very long time. Yeah. And we'll drop some rations off to you every now and then once you get beaten by 50 points. Yeah. But this has just been a year where you stink. Smell like shit. Harsh. <laughs> What, what, did, what did you take away from it? Because we saw the photo of how deflated you were yeah. in the car. Uh, robbed. Umpiring was so bad. No, <laughs> no. I, you, know, you know when I knew they uh, were cooked yeah. in this game? When Rowan Marshall decided to take a kick out. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> Rowan, you're 6'9". Let's just get down the line. Let's let the users do it. It was very funny when he kicked it to Guinea and then Guinea missed. That yeah. was a total summary of the game. But... St Kilda, I feel for you Saints fans. You are it, going through it right now. It hurt. That photo of me was, it, it said everything. I was really- Deflated. Really flat. Um, yeah, it just, I, I, I'm going to be honest, like I, I'm never really that confident. Like that's yeah. I, and genuinely, and I don't know too many St Kilda fans that go into most games, even, you know, when we've had some of the best teams ever, you know, in the 2009 period, never felt that confident. But I went into that game thinking this is this is surely like it, it won't be a thumping, but we'll win this one hundred percent. And you know what? I just put it down to maybe it just felt like Hawthorne genuinely. It sounds like a bit of a cop out. They wanted it so much more. Mm. I, I still don't think that they're better than St Kilda. I just think like player for player, I still no. think St Kilda have got a lot more on them. But it just felt like they went no no no. We want this. We, we want this. I think a Sammy Mitchell team is always going to be like that. Yeah. I think a Agreed. young team, they're going to be up and down. Like some days they'll be all for it and hanging on to every word he says. Yeah. And then other weeks they'll be flat like a do- against a um, – or whoever they got beaten by this year. But they'll have those up and downs. They were for up sure. for this game. Yeah. I think they smelt it as well. There was a bit of blood in the water with you guys. Mm. In Tassie, not going as not, as well as you think you should. I think they knew that this is probably another opportunity where we can scalp someone. Coming off a win though, like, like we, we – Well, know, true, yeah. We should have – we you really shouldn't have been out of smell, smell the fear too much. But they yeah. did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, true. I just, yeah, I think they looked at it saying probably on the outside, everyone thinks that we're wild, you know, yeah. worlds apart, but we think internally we can get them here. And then yeah. to their credit, they were good. Yeah. They were good. And they're just, there's nothing sexy about them, but no. they just scrap. They make things fucking hard. They actually, what they do is bring you down to their level. Yeah. Which I don't mind in a scrap fight. If you know you're losing, just fucking grab on something and bring it down with you. Yeah. <laughs> so I think Saints, maybe it's not a tactic, but I think teams do fall into a trap of, playing that brand of football where it's slow and shitty and ugly. I'd love that the Hawks fans are so up and about. I love Hawks fans. Do you? Because what do you they, like about them? I just love how passionate they are. One minute they're the worst team in the world and they beat St Kilda and it's like Flag Hawk 2024 cancel September plans. Yeah. I lo- it's very Carlton like. <laughs> So totally. I, can re- I love I love the passion of the Hawks fans. I love that the Wizard was putting a few spells out there. What I didn't love was the AFL posting a, a set shot from him. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, the Wizard's back. I was like, no, no, yeah. that's just a set shot. Yeah. Like, that's not very Wizard-like. I also love that Carl, Carl Amon is having a great year. Yeah. A genuine winger doing his role. Yeah. And we know how I feel about Meek. He does things to me that only Harley Reid and Nick Dacos do for me. Yeah. So when on the Hawks... I mean, they're still a bottom four team, but yeah. they're going to be a team now for the rest of the year where you're like, they will literally drag you down with them and yeah. it'll be a shit fight. Well, funniest moment of the day, though, I still think was, I can't remember who the two players were, but the two Hawks went up for, one guy went up for a mark and his teammate came over and <laughs> punched it out and I went, boys. Hey, there's what? some teething issues. Yeah. We got some teething <laughs> issues here. Yeah, we're we got to iron out hey, some few kicks. We got some blemishes over here. We got a pimple here. Yeah. We got some teeth, teeth coming through. Like, there's some stuff that we don't like. We got an ingrown hair. <laughs> like, we're not great, but we're getting there. Yeah. I th- yeah. And it's been well documented how bad their recruitment or the development has been. So for them to get that win, they'll think like we're on the right path here. Fucking hated Anthony Albanese in the huddle. Post game. Uh, thank you for bringing that up. That was horrible. Who who cleared that? <laughs> why would the Prime Minister... Hold on. Why would the Prime Minister ever need to be in any huddle? If you want a flag, still no. Do we feel... I think... Could we all agree? I don't know. All good with him being in the rooms? I wouldn't want Anthony in the fucking stadium. Because the budget... And I've <laughs> lost money on my Amex card. Yeah, that's true. No, I, I just... I, I just felt like Anthony didn't need to come into the huddle. Like it was, it was like, um, let's give a kid an experience. Yeah. Well, of course. You know, but that's the prime minister. Or if there was a really, would, how would you feel about like just a really funny celebrity? Like a crate, like if, uh, I, okay, like a Will Ferrell. That'd be funny. That'd be funny. Like, get yeah. him in. 
I just think that Anthony, like, you're the prime, you know? Yeah. You're prime train. Let's yeah. just. <laughs> I will say this, though. At least you knew the words. Mm, true. At- oh, yeah. Fuck. I did not know the words. I need a lyric. I wonder why I don't know the words. CTE. It's fucking probably CTE. This game was so good. And Essendon fans, if you're in Melbourne, you can feel what I feel. There is. <laughs> Ooh, above the skies, there's bomber planes rolling around everywhere. Yep. The mood's up and about. Essendon's off its fucking head at the moment. Genuine fraud test, this was. Pass, tick, tick, tick. Pass with flying colours. A plus, you're the best. <laughs> Unbelievable. Cancel all your plans in September, Essendon fans, because you're going nowhere except the MCG for an elimination final. <laughs> 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 and who knows what will happen there, but God will be fun. You know, 7,191 days, breaking the drought. They might do it. Mm. They might win a final this year. This could be the year they do it. Okay. I love that they are on a massive revenge tour against everyone who dared to joke about them. 7,000 days. Ha, ha. They are going to say it. They, they're different this year. Mm. They feel different. Last year, I think it was like, a, oh, cute. They're in the top eight. Oh, they're out of it. Didn't expect much. This year, it's like, no, no, they're legit. Yeah. They, they, they passed that fraud test with flying colours. Feels definitely like the best we've seen Brad Scott coach as well in a, in a long time. Yeah. Someone said I heard it's like they have an Essendon, uh, have a Collingwood feel to them. With Fly and how Fly like embraced all their personalities. Yeah. Well, didn't really embrace that Draper doing a podcast, but that's a different thing. But you know that an all in club and they, you know, they did the beautiful thing with um the kids. I think yes, that, yeah, yeah, of course, with the celebration, yeah, the pain and nails, do yep. all that. So I think like they're very much a club where it's let's have fun with what we're doing, but let's also get to work and yeah. let's go drag the Giants around Marvel Stadium like that. That was an impressive win. Yeah, it w- and semi convincing really like 20 points that's you know that's not a just squeak over no. the line kind of job that's good it gets a pretty much full strength giants and we've saying yeah. there's 10 they were pretty good like, yeah full strength the giants um i i love that when they were 22 points down it kind of looked like maybe this is going the way that we thought it would go but for them to be like no nah, no nah, we're not going to do what happened last time mm-hmm. where they beat us by 126 points the tsunami isn't doing this. We're going to embrace this and we're going to turn things around. Marvel Stadium was rocking and Langford, mm-hmm. to think Langford was a fringe midfielder and is now the guy up forward. He can't help but kick goals every week. Kick four. He's trying not to. No. He can't, you can't help it. He's saying, listen, I'm trying to get out of the way, but yeah. you guys keep kicking the ball. I'm snapping him. I'm checking him. Wherever you want me to kick a goal from, I'll do it. It's yeah. unbelievable the way he's turned his career around. And just a credit to... Dodorio as well. Mm. They said, hey, we don't like what you're doing with recruiting here. We want you to take a back, a back seat. He said, listen, give me another crack at this thing. <laughs> Barry Mackay, how much you don't care about the money? Come here. Platters, come here. Gresham, come here. Dersma, come here. Full credit to Dodorio. Uh, he has built this team. They are, they're a team that is designed and built to win and win now. Brad Scott coming in like, I feel like this is very much a time – their window's open. Yeah, and quickly, and sort of out of nowhere. But yeah. I, so I can see, I can actually, when you said that, I can so picture the moment where they said to said to him, "Yeah, mate, we, like th- th- thank th- you." Oh, he put his finger yeah. on someone's lips rudely and said, "One more." I'm doing it again. I'm going again. <laughs> I'm going to do this again. Um, for the Giants, just really a lull in the season. I still think they're going to be around the mark, but just a super, a super big lull for them. Yeah. Nothing exciting about them. They weren't blistering off half back. It wasn't like what we'd seen before. They just yeah. looked like a flat team. All of a sudden, they've lost three games now. And yeah, I think the, the, yeah. all the hype's kind of died off them. Yeah. Um, Probably doesn't help that their neighbours are so strong no. as well. I think there's some questions there. Like maybe the questions are, are you guys legit or just very good at memes? <laughs> you know? Like which one is it? Yeah, true. You know, I think it's very fun when you're up and about, but are you good at football? Yeah. Like, are we good at this thing? And here's something I need to work out, not for just for the Giants on the weekend, but for coaches around the league. The guy that has 37 on his back for Essendon, Nick Martin, might be a good idea to put someone on him, <laughs> you know, because he's having 40 a game. Yeah. Have we not figured that out yet? He's a very good footballer. Yeah. Very good footballer. So, well done the Dons. Love what they did. Love what they're doing. I love the fans' passion. I can feel it. Yeah. It's oozing out of Melbourne. I love it. The leagues are better. The league is better, sorry. The when league's the- better when the Dons are up yeah. and about. The league's better when the Tigers are up and about. The big yeah. league's better when the Pies are up and about. Yeah. It's better when the Blues are up and about. The yep. big four. And yep. we love all the clubs, but we love the big four. We do love the big we four. We do love the big four. Like the big four banks. 
Mm, no, I don't like the big four banks at all. No. Nice at that. Um, this will be a quick review. Richmond v Dogs. <laughs> Signed Bevo. Statement game. And we've always been in this corner. So 10 years. We, we kind of knew this was coming. I think we felt like this, not maybe. The, I mean, like that though? Like that was. You know what? It's such a hard read because it was a genuine training run. Like it was yeah. an open training for the dogs really. Um, and when the midfielders, again, sort of like the Port game, when the midfielders are having 40, 30 and four goals and three goals and Trelaw's doing his thing and Harms is popping up for four goals and 27, like you get, you're going to get absolutely smacked. Of course. Albeit is against Richmond. Richmond are absolute ass water of a team. <sighs> They are nowhere, but it, it, for Richmond, we I haven't seen them roll over like that in a long time. No, they're far worse than I th- ever thought they could be this year. At the year. start of the year, we came in here saying, no, no, Richmond, they they might get smacked, but they do not roll over. Yeah. They rolled over on the weekend, yeah. like massively, and just consensually do what you want to me. Yeah. You know, I'll take it. I didn't like that about them, and it's it, they're on par with North. Yeah. I don't think Ooh. they'll – I don't know when they play each other, but they're as bad as each other. They could be worse than North at the moment. <laughs> mm, do you reckon? I don't think. I don't who's, think they, who's winning that game if it was today? North. I don't think there's one player in Richmond who is who's playing their ability. No. Which player do you think? Like Bolton's down, Dusty's down. They have a lot of injuries, but there's not one player where you go, you know what? He's actually playing. Yeah. To Bolton, what he can play Bolton at the start of the season. Yeah. W- yeah the start, but, yeah. But at the moment, no. Nah. No, I think – and it's hard to get a read for the dogs in this game because I'm not sure who you are still. You played Richmond. Yeah. So do we learn anything about you? Maybe it was just a game where you all get your mojo back and you play yourself in the form, but I don't think we really learned a lot more about the dogs. We know that they can kick goals though. I think we did learn that. We, that yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean – You when can they pile get, it on. When they get things on their terms, they can just – it can be a landslide quickly for them. So um, well done to the dogs and Bevo. A bit of a pressure release. This mm. week for them. Um, a few question marks or a few decisions to make with uh, who comes in. Riley Sanders had 42 in the VFL. So he might come in, but I don't know where he goes exactly. Uh, the other game on Saturday night was Suns v North. Another quick review here, guys. North should be thankful that the Suns couldn't kick straight. 17 goals, 18 behinds. Now, we've made our thoughts and opinions very clear on this North team. They are losing on average by 52 points this year. Mm-hmm. Last year, they were losing on average by 39 points. So they're a worse team, considerably worse. Uh, they're, they're then just in no man's land. Um, can I just say this should have taken me so much less time than it did, but Richmond play North Melbourne mm-hmm. round 21. That long? That, oh, yeah. We've got to wait for ages. We've got to wait for ages to figure but, out. And you know what will happen is Richmond will get some guns back. Yeah. So North. So we won't really know. We won't know till around 21. Bugger. Yeah, that's a shame. Um, well, North, they're getting, they're getting worse. I feel like it's, it's actually getting worse for them. Yeah. I mean, they had a good first half. They were in it, but I looked at it and said, I just don't I, – again, I generally believe you won't win a game all year. Yeah. But you looked at this game and thought it'll be closer. Than people, I thought yeah. – and for the first half it was. It was yeah. a bit of a competition. Yeah. Um, and you thought, okay, this thing will maybe be 20, 30 points. Like yeah. Suns will get away from them. But to get away by that much mm. – just like, oh, I mean, we could do it all day. I'm kind of getting over bullying them and getting over them because they're just they they're going to go they're going to roll through the season now, just going through the motions. Yeah, uh, I think you, the only players you could say for North that are actually putting up a fight would be LDU, um, Sherry, Yep, McKercher, Sheasel, and Wardlaw. Yep, I think the others you say let's make a, let's make a decision what we're going to do with the rest of you guys. You've got a decent nucleus there though, admittedly. Like that's a, a decent starting point. You should have keep them. Yeah. Like do the, the, those players believe in what's happening? I mean, would you? I, no, I've been in no. teams that are like that. You don't. No. You don't see any like light at the end of the tunnel. You you start booking your footy season trips now. That's what we look that's, – honestly, that's their mindset mm. is booking footy trips. I guarantee it. Let's get through the season. Let's just tick these boxes and let's just go to Mexico. Yeah. You know? Which is a shame. So the Suns, hats off to them, won their first game outside of GC and we've been begging for them to win a game outside the Gold Coast. Yeah. They go to Darwin, they're home away from home. Yep. They absolutely handled the conditions better. They looked like a team that was playing with a dry football for most of it. Yeah. Um, and they passed their fraud test, the first one. They have one coming up this week against Geelong without a Jeremy Cameron. Oh, yeah. Okay. In Darwin on Thursday night football, which is... Hey, yeah. Well done for you for Thank get, you. getting the stadium right. Yeah, I know. You know this so early on. That'll be there. Yeah, that'll be yeah, that'll be good up there for Thursday night football. 
Yeah, that'd be really like, and a good game between well, both Geelong need to answer and the Suns need to show us if they're legit or not. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Mother's Day football pies versus the percentage booster. Absolute treat here. Um, it was competitive for the first five minutes, and then yeah. the pies just. Oof. Put the sword to him, just destroyed him. And Pies didn't have six of their top nine goal scorers, so we're probably thinking, where are these goals going to come from? I thought Mason was going to be the guy. He was not the guy. No, <laughs> no, no, he was not the guy at all. Um, so they found a way to keep scoring. They got soldiers to come back. I think in the next two weeks, you'd think, but they really cannot afford to lose anymore. No, like their injuries are starting to mount now. And there was a game within the game here, Dacos versus Harley. Dacos probably took chocolates mm-hmm. easily. Um, had 35 and one. Reed had 17 and a mark of the year nomination. Yeah, that was pretty good. I glazed him hard. Yeah, he was good. So um, just going to be unreal watching those two go to head for the next decade. It's it's literally our Jordan or LeBron argument. Yeah. I think, don't you reckon? <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit It will back. be for the next 10 years. Who's better? Well, I, I mean, yeah, it's different because obviously they're playing at the same time, but I can so foresee in the next five years when West Coast are good again. Yeah. And they're just like, you sort of circle that... That we, fixture? And yeah. You know, how good is this going to be? We haven't asked this question because it's very like SEN, but who do you, if you were Tazzy yeah. and you had to pick between one of them, who are you taking? And Tazzy, you're coming in like next year. Well, if Tazzy come in next year, you probably go Dacos. But I think given when they're coming in, you'd pick Reed because slightly younger. Mm. Would that be fair? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is yeah. that the way you'd go? Stupid fucking question. Doesn't exist. <laughs> There's what a stupid question. I would never answer happening. that. I would never answer that. It's just yeah. not even not even feasible that would happen. Sorry, Tim. Um, I would pick – I'd go purely on potential. Yeah. And what I see right now, I see that Harley over his – are so stupid over eight games. I think his ceiling might be bigger than Dacos's, yeah. which is an insult but not mean to be an insult to Dacos. Yeah. I think it's I know – that he's that good. I think – that. They're so good. Yeah. I've seen what Dacos can do. I'd be willing to take a punt on Harley and yeah, see what okay. his ceiling is, Yep, is what I'm trying to say. Um, so what did you say about Dacos that made people angry? No, I just said- <laughs> I think people made me mention it. You said something about him not being that good. You're not listening, everyone. I'm saying he's be- he's better. Dacos is amazing. But- he's an incredible footballer. But from what I've seen so far, that if I had to- If I was like an editor and stitched together all of their highlights- what we've seen from Harley Reid, it's far more exciting. Yeah. Like, Dacos is a better footballer. He's done – he's won them a flag. He's incredible. Should have won a brown life if he wasn't injured. Mm. He is yeah. so special. It's just that he just gets the job done in a really simple, straightforward, short back and sides way. Harley Reid is like it's seriously – he it's might exciting. He might touch the ball five times. Yeah, yeah. But every touch will be like, oh, you mm. know. Yeah. So that's what I think. So it I just want to put that you, yeah. on record. It reminds me of like um, when Cyril was in different players in different positions, but like you knew when Cyril was around that something was happening. Harley's totally. like that. But you know with Nick Dacos, like he's just going to go inside and he's going to come out with the ball at the front of it and just yep. lay someone out. Yep. You know? Every time. Where Harley could sit on someone's head yeah. at any point. He could stiff arm someone. Like they're just different players. Um, and for West Coast fans, I think you're doing pretty well. You're officially out of the running for finals again. Yeah. I'll put a line through you straight away after that game. But I think – you can deal with this season by just glazing Harley 24-7. Yeah. <laughs> this is your moment just to glaze him hard for the next year. I think he um, needs to get out of that market, though, that he keeps going to. I'm getting yeah, a little the uncomfortable. TikTok markets. For Harley, I'd be asking, like, you're probably earning a bit of money now. You could probably just afford your own groceries, couldn't you? Yeah. Because I can't. So if you want to send some <laughs> my way, that would be good. And he's getting rinsed for things like, you know, using a plastic bag for one apple. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. I think Harley, we've got to stop those TikToks. Yeah. If I was your manager... I'd be saying, let's just get away from the old supermarket TikToks. And in the last game in the graveyard, we had Adelaide v Brisbane. Now, genuine graveyard this game was. A 4 p.m. start. We had Kelly doing a thing on there. We had a draw. And then we got tricked into watching the bounce. (laughs) Got me quickly. I was watching the draw. Oh, yep, we're wrapping up. And then the bounce is on. I was like, oh, my God, my eyes are burning. No, 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 no. Don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. Um, And the draws, I know that I, I didn't like it. When the first draw happened, I said, we need a result. I've now come around and we know that I love the draw. It's good for the sport. Let's play both songs at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> at the same time. I like at it. the same time because the silence of the crowd after a draw is horrible. Yeah. You can hear the disappointment in yeah. the fans. 
I think we got to do something to like play both songs at the same time, play one song or the other, maybe play a generic song. We got to do something. I think here. there definitely needs to just be a draw song. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think because you're probably right. It's probably the only thing that we don't like about it realistically mm. because every other sport in the world allows them, seriously. Yeah. Maybe not the NFL, but it's normal. Yeah. You still get a point. You know, like it's not, you're not, not a really. loser when you, when we, you know, when we're doing our AFL tips, but. You know, it doesn't matter who. We yeah, all get the win there. Point. It's just the vibe. It's just like just a vibe. lead balloon. Yeah. Like, I think – and all the – I've come around. I'll start on a bit. I'm coming around now. I think the old school media is like, no, nah, draws. We need to do something about the draws. Draws are actually good. It's actually exciting to be like, okay, now we're we're two points um, either in the eight or out of the eight totally. or two behind. Or now we need to actually boost our percentage because we need, a, we need that to be right. Like it makes – the latter so much more interesting and every game has more weight into it when you do draw. Well, your point there is obviously we're still really early on in the season, but mm. Collingwood sit in eighth spot by two points. Yeah, per- and awesome. Like how good's that? Yeah, easy. And now I think, well, the Bombers as well, were they in third by two points? Yeah, by two points. Great. How good's that? That's <laughs> awesome. So I think we we got to embrace the draw. Yeah. I think the song could be, draw, draw, draw. How do you like me? Nobody likes me. Draw, draw, draw. <laughs> How do you like me? Nobody, Nobody likes, likes me. me. Um, that'd be great. Um, just on the result though, I think Brizzy, you'd walk away with two points. I feel like Adelaide were really annoyed about dropping the four and getting mm-hmm. two. I feel like Brisbane went there and said, you know what, we'll take two here. Given the injuries, they didn't have, yeah. um, we're going to hear Ainsworth, Coleman, obviously, McCarthy, Stasevich, Gardner, Robert, Robertson, and Zach Bailey. Yeah. That's a, they're all pretty much in your, in your grand final team. Yeah. So you go to Adelaide, depleted off pretty much, they played at 7 p.m. Sunday last week. Yeah. So, and traveling, you'd go there saying, we'll take two here. Yeah. Given our season's on the line and it, we need literally on life support, we'll take two and keep it alive. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. If you were to ask Adelaide, though, you know, first couple rounds in, hey, would you take a draw? In a few weeks' time against Brisbane, mm. you'd probably go, yeah. Yeah, they would, yeah. You know. LA's fans' expectations, they're just expecting a lot more now given that they've had a month of decent football. Mm. Mm. And again, their season's on life support, really. They need, to, they can't really drop one anymore, mm. at least for the next couple of rounds. Um, so you can say it, I'll keep true. quiet. But yeah. Would well, you want to say anything about Adelaide? No, 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 no. You like, you happy with Adelaide? No, no, no. I'm just saying nothing. Okay. Yeah, don't say anything about Adelaide. They get angry about I'm you. I'm just going to say nothing. Um, uh, and getting on the Adelaide fans, they reckon the umpires let them down. Now, you won the free kick count, 1916. Um, but I saw some of the comments and they were like, oh, it's hard to beat two teams out there. Mm, yeah, yeah, love that. No, I no. love that. There's nothing better than that comment. Yeah. It's hard <laughs> when you play two teams. I love that. Such a good comment. Um, I think that Brisbane, again, need to find a way to kick goals. Like yeah. Danaher and Hipwood aren't doing the job at the moment. How many goals do you reckon Dana, uh, Hipwood has kicked this year? This He's played year? nine games. Nine games... 16? Let's kick 10. Yeah, okay. Mm. Not good enough, really. He will never be dropped. Yeah. No, he's a platypus. Yeah. Old hip wood. He's not going to get dropped, so they but, need to figure it out. But th- this is the thing. They shouldn't need to figure it out because they've, they've got an unreal forward line, realistically. Yeah. Or maybe they don't, but, you know, on paper, it writes it's, itself. It's one of those ones where you go, um, hip wood, can I just see in the office for a minute? <laughs> see, <laughs> the, the funny thing is we are paying you – that's got six numbers on it um, – <laughs> Ooh. What the fuck's happening out there? <laughs> you know, like you only kicked 10 goals in nine games and we're probably expecting, again, on this number here, a little bit more than, that's 3 million, so that's a lot of money. Um, <laughs> goals just lost 13 grand, so a lot of money there. Like, what's going on? Do you feel like he then does it to Doro? He goes, shh. Yeah, ah, shh, 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 let me do my thing. One more time. Here comes zero goals three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I don't know. And again, this comes from a place of we want Brisbane to be amazing. We want um, the eel to be good because he can literally, we've said it, he can... He can turn the game on its head in a quarter. Yeah. So I just think they need to figure out. I think maybe they're not even gelling together, Danaher and Hipwood at the moment. Maybe not. Um, but they have to figure it out. Archie had to go down there and tell him how to do it, boys. He said, listen, I'm going to kick four here and get over the line. So that's that's a draw. It's disappointing. But that's what happens. And that is our round view, our Mad Monday. It's been truly mad. I lost a lot of money. I'm going to go try and find that. Um, it's probably somewhere, I'm going to assume in Africa. Okay. A little scammer there is just going to town on me, punching some codes in, getting a lot of money out of my card. So I'm going to go stop that bleeding. Mm-hmm. Um, we had the violinist in, Evangelina. That great. was pretty good. That was very good. What a Monday. We hope you're enjoying it. Did you have a good Monday? I've had a great Monday so far. It's been great. It's been great. Thank you for listening. We are back again on Thursday for the preview. We certainly aren't. Before we wrap up, I think it's important for merch updates. Correct. Yes, we have the website going live this week. I'm going to put it out there. 
Yeah, I'm going to put the uh, pressure on Sammy. I'm sure it's all over the line. I spoke to him last week. Website will be live this week. The merch will be available to buy. Again, Unreal. very limited stock because we didn't know if anyone was going to listen to the show this year. Turns out a lot of people listen. So we're going to get that live. Yep. Hoodies, caps are going to be on there. So getting quick. I, li- I when Please I say do. Limited, yeah, pl- like I <laughs> need this to yeah. sell because – I don't have any cash anymore. So that is fun for everyone. But again, thank you for listening, guys. We're back Thursday um, and we'll see you then. Imagine what you could be buying instead. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.